This is beef stew. And this is what Mexicans call beef stew. Only this beef stew is way better than this beef stew. Because this isn't beef stew. This is what Mexicans and Texicans call carne guisada. A delicious tender meat dish in a flavorful rich gravy seasoned with Mexican spices. And remember, if you ever find yourself in a little antiquaria somewhere reading a menu in a foreign language you don't understand, don't forget carne guisada is not to be confused with carne asada. They are not the same. I have made this mistake. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Let's begin! The recipes for carne gasada can vary from their chunk sizes to their gravy ratio. This particular recipe for carne gasada will call for three pounds of meat, traditionally beef such as chunk or shoulder roast, though other meat such as pork could theoretically be used, oil, onion, bell pepper, or spicier pepper if you prefer, salt, pepper, garlic powder, cumin, rotel tomatoes and chiles, agua, and tomato sauce. For exact measurements, look at the list below. When it comes to serving, your options are only limited by your creativity. You could put carne gasato over enchiladas, or nachos, or put it in a burrito, or eat it in a box, or with a fox, or in a house, or with a mouse. You could eat it here, or there, or even in a taco. For me, though, I'm going with the most traditional and, honestly, one of the most satisfying serving methods. Simply flour tortillas and rice. Let's go! Prepare your meat by placing it on a cutting surface, trimming the fat, and slicing it in medium-sized chunks with a knife or whatever cutting tinsel you most prefer. Toss any fat you collect off of the meat into the frying pan you'll be using for the majority of the cooking process. Don't worry, we won't actually be putting any of this fat in the stew, we're just going to season the pan with it in a moment. Once your meat has been chunked, dice up your onion and pepper thusly. Once this is done, it's time to season our pan. Start rendering the fat by turning the pan on high heat. Wait for a few minutes until the trimmings in the pan start to brown and leave all their juicy goodness in the bottom of the pan. Once this is done, you can discard the trimmings by tossing them in the garbage or sticking them in a pot of beans or something. Prepare your Rotel tomatoes and some of your water, as well as your seasonings and flour. With a touch of olive oil, lump your meat chunks into the pan and begin to sear them on high heat. After a few minutes and some fine color on your meat chunks, your meat should begin to ooze its juicy goodness into the pan like so, at which point we'll add in our pepper and onion. Let the onion and pepper's juices cook down and mix with the meat for about five to seven minutes. Once your meat and pepper and onion start to look like this, add pepper, salt, garlic powder, cumin, or as the supermarkets around these parts label it, comino, and finally the flour. Mix in the flour with the rest of the spices and meat just before finally adding in the rotel tomatoes and water. Lots and lots of extra water. Let the mixture boil a bit before transferring everything into an oven-safe cooking pot. Personally, I use a cast iron Dutch oven, which I have reason to believe imparts additional flavor into whatever you're cooking. But if you don't have one of those, any oven-safe cooking pot and lid will do fine. Cover the mixture and put it into the oven at 360 degrees for about an hour to an hour and a half, or two hours at 300 degrees, taking care to take it back out and stir the mixture every 30 minutes or so. Once the time is passed, the mixture should look something like this. A nice, thick, bubbly gravy, perfectly spiced, and most important of all, extremely tender, full apart meat. But alas, it is not done yet. At the last moment, add in one small can, or about four ounces, of basic tomato sauce to the mixture before putting the lid back on and tossing it back into the oven for another 15 minutes or so until the mixture has transformed into its final state. Stop!
standing off, carne quesada's bubbly, meaty, juicy, spicy awesomeness. Despite the fancier stews and ragouts of other cultures, made with cheap ingredients and elegantly served on cheaper plates, carne quesada's simplicity and pleasurable flavors will outmatch even the finest of beef stews or the most rustic of goulashes every time. And the diversity in the ways it can be served will have you making it again, again, and again. I hope you beef stew and goulash aficionados out there have learned something new and valuable, and continue to crave this ever unique taste from the great lands of Texaco. Anyway, if you thought this recipe was delicious, why don't you try out my tacos by watching my How to Taco video? Or better yet, combine the two and have a carne quesada taco! I'm hungry. As always, thanks for watching, good night, and Godspeed.